I feel as if some people don't understand how government works and I don't know how they got to Congress. Okay, I got a lot of ground to cover. Um, I do want to clarify, Mr. Fahey, when you consistently talk about NY or, or New York crime, you're speaking um, in an opinionated stance. You're not speaking from a place of fact, correct? No, I'm speaking from a place of facts. Okay, uh, well, let a, me clarify York, for you. Thank you so much. I'm reclaiming okay, my time. Okay, let I'll, me clarify for you that NYPD puts out reports. And in April, it said overall index crime across New York City dropped another 4.9%. As it relates to May, the report says overall index crime across New York dropped another 2.4 percent. Representative Jasmine Crockett is at it again, setting Republicans and their witnesses straight while debunking the false narratives they continue to spew. I can't even imagine someone bringing a fraud case to the United States Attorney's Office where nobody lost money, there were no victims, and no one was worse off at the end of it. It just makes it laughable, even before you get to steps two through probably 20 that make this case really absurd to have been brought to begin with. Jonathan Fahey, a Fox News guest and a former DHS and ICE official in the waning days of the Trump administration, is working with Jim Jordan and the Republicans to cast doubt on Trump's convicted felon status. They're arguing that the government was unconstitutionally weaponized against him. It wasn't a contribution. If it was a contribution, it would have been, wouldn't have have been reported until after the election, and no one suffered any losses, and yet they bring this charge against President Trump. I find that just amazing. If that's not political motivation, I don't know, because what other motivation could there be? It's really almost in, inarguable at this point that the motivation for this case was political. It's really I've never heard a, a serious argument that that it should have been prosecuted otherwise. I know Ms. Mr. Wu might might have one, but I just haven't haven't heard that because it seems political from the you know from the inception all the way to the end. Yeah, wasn't a contribution. Wouldn't have been reported even if it was. If they treat, pay that out of the campaign. No one suffered loss, and yet there was some kind of conspiracy to impact an election. Campaign finance uh, expert says it wasn't a contribution, and even if it was a contribution, if they treated it as a contribution, paid it out of the campaign, it wouldn't have been reported until after the election, so there's no conspiracy to influence the election. No one suffered any harm or fraud in the initial case, former prosecutor tells us, and the judge tells us that the defendant didn't know what he was charged with until the end of the trial, and the judge gave instructions to the jury, never mind the fact the judge should have recused himself, which you point out in your written testimony, judge, the judge didn't tell the jury or told the jury you don't have to be unanimous. But the real thing here is the opportunity cost. And you raised this in your testimony, Mr. Fahey. The opportunity cost. When Alvin Bragg did the day one memo, says we are not going to charge all these felonies, we're going to bring them down to misdemeanors and let the bad guys roam the streets of New York. How that squares with what happened here, that to me is the real issue. That's the issue that most Americans see, like, we're going to do this to the the former president of the United States, meanwhile, take felony charges against really bad guys on the street and bring them down to misdemeanors. That's the opportunity cost here, I believe. Now that we've heard the latest nonsense Jordan is trying to push on the American people, let's turn back to Crockett's response. All she needed was the truth and a little legal training. I mean, she is a lawyer. So currently, I think that I serve in the legislative branch. Would you agree? I agree. Okay, fine. Can you tell me when somebody goes to court, such as a criminal convicted of 34 felony counts, state court in New York, um, would that be the legislative people or judicial people? Well, it's really the executive that's prosecuting and then it's within the judiciary to run the trial properly. Okay, very good. So, judiciary. So typically, if someone has an issue with, say, what happens in court, do they then somehow hop from state court all the way to the federal legislative branch, or is there a different process in which you are supposed to be able to um, explain any issues you may have? The process would be the judicial appellate process holding aside the issue of state versus federal. Oh, interesting. Okay. All right. So normally people don't get convicted on a state level and somehow end up litigating the issue on the federal level in the legislative branch. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. All right. So something is different about what's going on today. I just wanted to clarify because I thought I was living in the upside down for a second. Crockett's tongue-in-cheek style is particularly effective and necessary. The rhetoric is necessary when pushing back on such tomfoolery. Playing it too straight 
is like giving some credibility to Jordan and the other side. They must be made fun of because, well, they have no credibility. If this were a courtroom and she was litigating in front of a jury, Crockett would definitely have their full attention. It is my understanding, and I only kind of went to law school, passed a couple of bar exams, and practiced on the state and federal levels, but just clarify for me. When someone goes in to be prosecuted, is it, say, the president of the United States that somehow becomes the state prosecutor in New York? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because he's the executor, huh? That's that other branch. Correct. That's the, okay, okay. All right, so you have this prosecutor, and in this case, it's Alvin Bragg, who was duly elected, correct? Correct. Not appointed by the president, correct? Right. Duly elected by the citizens in his jurisdiction, right? Right. So the very first part of a case is that we go through an investigation. After that investigation, then the prosecutor usually has what we would consider to be some sort of prosecutorial discretion as to whether or not they want to go forward, correct? Correct. All right. And then they use that discretion. But then when it's somebody that is facing a felony amount of time, which is usually in most states over a year then they have to present it to a grand jury. Is that right? That's right. Now, a grand jury is comprised of citizens, correct? Correct. U.S. citizens from that area, correct? Right. Okay, so they have to come to the conclusion that they are going to issue what we call a true bill, correct? Correct. All right, so then we have an indictment. And then there's pretrial motions, there's pretrial hearings, all kinds of stuff, right? Right. All right, and then ultimately, depending on where you are, you have the opportunity to say, hey, I want a jury trial, correct? Correct. And a jury trial is comprised of U.S. citizens again, right? Right. Okay, very good. All right, so can you tell me so far if all of this took place in the case in New York? Yes, it did. Oh, okay. Your attorney is allowed to pick the jury. They're allowed to present evidence. And ultimately, it is a jury of your peers who decides whether or not you are guilty or not, correct? Correct. And in this case... That's the judge of all two. And in this case, they found him guilty not once, not twice, not three times, not four, not five, not six. I could keep going on, but 34 counts were given. So the opinions of these people who were not juries is not what we do in this country. In this country, we have a system in which jurors decide who is found guilty. And if you have a problem with that, you go to the appellate court, which the the last time I checked, he was raising money so that he could go to the appellate court and appeal his decision, and they will have the final say so. Thank you so much. Yes, they will. The mistakes or missteps the Trump legal team made during the trial were solely their fault. And I'm not even blaming the lawyers. I mean, look who they had for a client. He's been known to make contradictory demands of his legal team. He often can't keep them for long. This was not some nefarious scheme to falsely convict Donald Trump. No matter which cronies dressed like him showed up outside the courtroom to deliver the talking points. I mean, we've known for a long time that Jim Jordan lacks integrity and he has zero shame. And this is yet another example of both. Look at the sheer absurdity and audacity here. Jordan somehow does not know the basics of how the legal system works, state versus federal. He's seemingly clueless about the various moving parts involved in Trump's trial. And then he actually believes he will easily get away with engaging in such clear and obvious political theater meant to manipulate the general public and cast doubt on our legal system for all the wrong reasons. Jordan does get credit for one thing, tenacity. He will never give up on pushing the lie.